Hey, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to a Thursday. It is the Earth Master here with an update on April 18th, 2024. It is about 11.15 a.m. here, California time. Latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows a 1.9 in the Hawaii area. If you notice here, quite a bit of earthquake activity stirring up here in the Gulf of California. Now, a lot of that movement is showing up here across the Yellowstone seismograph stations. Why I bring up Yellowstone here? Because uh, this shows that these are upper fours and probably some low magnitude five earthquakes striking out here. The signals in question are going to be uh, roughly some of these right here and also the more recent five pointers down here. Now, looking at the EMSC data here shows quite a bit of earthquake activity ramping up into the Gulf of California. Got uh, a pretty decent amount of earthquake activity out here. At least probably 15 or so earthquakes in the Gulf of California. Uh, a lot of these are spreading center uh, fault systems and also uh, a strike slip fault along this plate boundary that runs through here. Uh, the USGS showing a handful of the earthquakes, including that 5.6 that struck about uh, 8 o'clock local time here in California. And uh, there's a lot more than the four earthquakes. So I'm not for sure why they're not uh, reporting all of these. But uh, goodness, we got a, a decent swarm down here in the Gulf of California. Let me bring up the uh, map here, the list, and see. See, this is going to show all the earthquakes over in two range and whatnot. But uh, hold on a second here. I'm still not a big fan of their map since they've updated it. I miss the old style maps out here with the EMSC. But uh, there's obviously there's more than just the five pointer showing up. There's a 5.6 that struck this morning. Uh, another five pointer, quite a few fives, fours, and a bunch of threes in here as well. Uh, the concern for this is the migration pattern that we've seen out here in the last few days. We've noticed a handful, uh, more than a handful, a lot of earthquake activity across the Middle America Trench area. That's going to be down here off the Mexico region into the Nicaragua area, down into the Costa Rica area. All that activity seems to be migrating up here towards the northwest. Uh, and that kind of puts California right here in the prime zone for a potential large scale activity. Uh, now, last night and yesterday, we've seen a handful of earthquakes up here at the northern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. So that's a, you know, a little concerning in itself. But that shows and tells me right there that this area is strained and moving and with california sitting right in between these two zones right here we got to watch what plays out here uh, now the movement up into the north here shows about two earthquakes a 4.9 and a 4.9 um, let me see what the emsc is reporting here way up on the northern part uh oh, actually it doesn't even look like they're reporting it let's see here double check and see oh yeah they are back over here it just it's got a weird update so they're showing at least three earthquakes here in the last 24 hours 4.9 uh 4.9 and a 4.5 so we got a series of earthquakes north and a swarm down south here along the pretty much the same plate boundary so obviously that's going to put california in the risk zone out here we'll continue to watch california for some further movement right now things are a uh, little on the quiet side in between these zones here. Uh, let's pull up the 2.5 map and above. That pretty much completely erases all the earthquakes off the map, except for a handful of earthquakes. Uh, we did have a 3.4 just off the Northern California coastline this morning and a 2.7 uh, follow-up earthquake. Very shallow earthquake here uh, outside the Mount Lassen region, well south of the Mount Lassen area, not associated with the volcano whatsoever. But this is the area that's seen a 4.5 uh, a couple weeks ago and a 4.1. So uh, things are tight out here in terms of the potential strain across the plate boundary. We'll watch California here closely. Up into the uh, Pacific Northwest, small amount of earthquake activity across Mount Hood and Mount, Saint, uh, Mount Rainier today. Really nothing big going on, just some small microquake activity across those volcanoes. And Yellowstone National Park, I just showed you guys the map. Most of those readings that you're show that are being seen here are the earthquakes in the Gulf of California. You can tell these are distant earthquakes. Let's see if this site's working. I guess it is. And there's a handful of them. There's that five pointer, five point uh, six, but there's quite a few other fours out there as well, and a couple other earthquakes distant. 
from the Yellowstone uh, region. As far as local activity goes, I'm really not seeing a whole lot up there. Maybe a few microquakes west of the area here into the uh, uh, Idaho area. We're close to Idaho. Somewhere around there. All right, uh, let's see. What else we got? Texas area still rocking and rolling with earthquakes. New Madrid seismic zone was somewhat active yesterday. They had a 2.8 today, a 1.6 early this morning. So things are still uh, somewhat active out here across this major hazard zone. In the New Jersey area, this earthquake, uh, well, it looks like they added a couple more after midnight, 0.8 and 1.5. So that brings up total tally here. I believe we're more than that total tally of about goodness almost a hundred earthquakes out here in the new jersey area following that 4.8 couple weeks back now a multitude of quakes calming down as expected but uh definitely keep an eye out here on the west coast got some interesting movement taking place here on a broad scale uh, there's an activity uh into the nicaragua area from yesterday now the EMSC model globe showing quite a bit more activity in this region today. Quite a few fours and threes across that plate boundary. Uh, expecting some further uptick here. Remember I mentioned uh, uh, watch the Puerto Rico area for some uptick. That um, somewhat taking place. A 3.9 early this morning off the Dominican Republic coast. But really no broad scale activity yet. Uh, but whenever we see movement out here across the Middle America Trench and the deeper regions, uh, sometimes that can put the squeeze out here on this little bitty tiny Caribbean plate. And um, we'll continue to watch that area as well. South America region, seeing a handful of earthquakes, although not too active here. Just uh, some twos and threes, even a four-pointer out there uh, earlier this morning. Down in the southern Atlantic Ocean out there, 5.2 in the uh, divergent zone, I believe. Uh, a couple different fracture zones out here. This earthquake coming in about 1 o'clock this morning. The rest of the Atlantic looks pretty quiet across the Mediterranean area. One earthquake shaking things up out in Turkey today, but that's going to be a 5.6. Uh, there's definitely a handful of earthquakes striking out there um, in the last couple days. Um, looks like some threes and twos. There's that 5.6 there in the mix. A 2.7 coming in right now into that same area. Uh, definitely heightened out here in this region. Also across the area of the Himalayas, just north here. Got uh, 5.1 coming in to the uh, China area out here. Pretty active region here in the last couple days. Java Trench is the quiet zone, roughly from about the Myanmar region southward along this plate boundary. A lot of times these quiet zones here uh, need to be watched as well with a lot of activity stirring up back here and then further up along the plate boundary. It's key to watch these areas and you know similar to what we're looking for across the uh, California area. They're just um, right there in that region where we expect some further uh, subsequent activity. Uh, New Zealand what's going on down here? Gosh darn it a lot of activity it looks like quite a few threes and uh, looks like a four pointer up along the Kermadec Trench as well. Let's go check out the GeoNet servers, see what's going on out here today. Uh, 5.4 yesterday, that was along the southern end of the Kermadec Trench. We need to check out the all magnitudes here to see what's going on. 3.4 north of the Milford Sound area, South Island region. It looks like that's just off the plate boundary. Um, five kilometers deep. There's another Kermadec Trench earthquake, fairly deep there, 494 kilometers. North Island area, 1.6. Still seeing uh, quite a bit of deeper movement underneath the North Island area. Look at that, 101 kilometers, 222, 249. Goodness, that's why I'm saying there's definitely, definitely uh, you know, an interesting amount of deep activity in this area. Uh, look at the earthquake drums here. Shows, um, which one is that now? That was uh, about eight hours or so ago. That's going to be the uh, that five-pointer along the southern end of the Kermadec Trench. Handful of other smaller quakes there along the plate boundary in South Island. Some of those threes being reported on there, it looks like. So we'll continue to watch that. Again, the deeper activity, I feel, is associated with the Hikarangi subduction zone that sits right here. That's a, you know, a major concern 
for the area because it's been quite a while since they've seen a mega quake out here. We're talking about above an 8.0 in this area, and it's very capable. All right, see what else we got uh, across the rest of the globe. Still quiet out here in the seismic gap zone. See, we got a couple different regions here to watch in the next day or so. We got the uh, Java Trench out here, region of the Solomon Islands, Vanuatu area, and Papua New Guinea, pretty quiet. Kurokamachaka, this area has just been acting super quiet here recently, and it's I'm sure it's got enough strain built up for a big earthquake. It doesn't take many, many years to build up a large potential earthquake in this area. Got a major subduction zone there that sits off the uh, Japan area into the uh, northern edge here off the coast of Russia. It's been a little while since we've seen any larger activity out there. Hawaii, pretty quiet, uh, at least on the Earthquake 3D globe, although we're getting a handful of earthquakes out here. One uh, 2.0 in the last hour, six kilometers deep. A handful of earthquakes up here across the uh, Kilauea Volcano Summit region, most of that from yesterday. I want to check and see if they got their data working out here. I was trying to check the uh, deformation data in last night's update, but uh, nothing was working, and I think it's been offline here for a couple days. Let's go check that out, see if it's uh, working. Nope. So really, <clears throat> we have no clue what's going on out there. This is the data that monitors uh, inflation or deflation. We could be who knows where right now so kind of weird um, that it's not working hopefully they get that fixed seismograph stations out here that'll give us a good indicator of earthquake activity this right here i seen it looks like fluid movement magma movement right here in the last 15 minutes or so some earthquake activity as well but we got to watch out that looks like a reading of uh, some fluid movement, and that's up at, around the uh, summit region. Uh, as far as Iceland goes, let's go over and check out the Iceland earthquake map here and see if there's anything new in this area. Yeah, got a little bit of uptick here, north and uh, yeah, south as well along the rift zones. Uh, quite active in between as well as expected. A little bit of movement outside the Grindavik area to the northeast, a ways away from our current ongoing activity. Uh, really no major earthquake activity in the uh, Grindavik area for now, underneath it, I should say. Uh, we still have an ongoing eruption to the northeast where it looks like one active crater remains, splashing about some lava there out of that beautiful volcanic feature. Here's a broader view from livefromiceland.is. Shows, uh, well, there's one region here. Not for sure what that is out here. Is this a, I wonder if that's picking up the power plant. Looks like that might be. It's hard to tell in that, mo in that uh, image. Yeah, that's got to be the power plant right there, creating that uh, steam. Pretty windy up there, it looks like. Clouds are zipping by pretty quick. Let's see if they got any uh, updates here for the uh, Icelandic Met Office. This was put out today, it looks like. Land rise continues at a steady pace. The volume of the lava bed has reached 33.2 million cubic meters. Well, uh, we're past a month now of ongoing eruption. Uh, still seeing, obviously, inflation underneath the area, supplying the reservoir below in the Savart Singia region, which ultimately will uh, funnel this up to the current surface uh, area right now. There's the uh, stacking, so to speak, of the lava. Bring this over here a little bit so you guys can see. Here's the current crater. Notice that this is continuing to stack lava on top of older lava beds, and uh, that's just creating some more land out there, some higher elevation. Safe and sound down there in Grindavik. We'll continue to watch that and report back on any major changes that take place out here. 
All right, uh, what else we got? Anything major going on in the Indian Ocean? Looks pretty quiet. All right, let's check out space weather, see what's going on. I know we got uh, quite a few sunspots that are directly facing Earth. Quite a few of those are somewhat active as well. Pretty large cluster of growing sunspots. Notice the complexity here uh, kicking up in the magnetic uh, features of this image. Uh, this active region that had been facing Earth is now way out on the northwestern limb. See, look, look, look what happened to this sunspot. I noticed it last night that it was starting to separate, and today it looks even worse. It was getting quite complex, and um, but now everything's fairly stable out there. It's separating further, and I really don't expect much from this area. The main regions right now are going to be this cluster of sunspots that are almost directly facing Earth and uh, roughly about center disk here of the sun, perfectly lined up. Got to keep an eye on that area of sunspots. Uh, the overall threat right now, somewhat elevated, 99% chance for a C flare. M flare at 75, and X flare has been bumped up to about 20%. So uh, that's kind of a decent X flare threat. The SFI index is elevated as well at 217. No major roars in the forecast. Hopefully we can get that to change here with these large sunspots that are facing the Earth. Numerous sunspots on the far side of the sun. We'll watch these as they come around the bend. Uh, but for now, we got to watch that huge cluster that's currently facing the Earth. All right, Storm Prediction Center out here today for the severe weather outlook. Shows an enhanced area and a large region of slight and marginal uh, category out here. 5% chance for tornado probability there in the brown or kind of a burnt red color. Uh, green indicating a 2% chance for tornadoes. It looks like the main threat is going to be some large damaging hail in the hatched area with a 30% chance up here around St. Peter's, Missouri area, Chesterfield. Heads up if you guys are out there in this region today. Large hail threat uh, lurks in the forecast. There's the uh, severe weather maker today as we head into the weekend here. Got a little bit of more moisture coming up here from the Gulf. Feeding uh, this region here with some thunderstorms. Now next week here looks like it's going to be uh, quite active as well. Uh, we do have a low pressure out here and the return of moisture potentially stirring up some severe weather out here as we head into next weekend as well. We'll have to watch that a little bit closer as we get to that time frame. But as you can see, things are quite active out here across the map. Um, the California storm, it does look like we're going to get a little bit of rain here. Um, not much, just a little bit next weekend on the 20s, or that's going to be Friday night into Saturday. And that could be a weather maker. It, it looks a little disorganized here right now, but uh, I think this is going to be more in agreement of a severe weather maker out here across this region as we head towards the end of April. Far as any asteroid approaches, any close ones going on today? Well, today's the 18th. We got uh, a few large asteroids. As you can see here, this is the uh, diameter, approximate size of the asteroid. These are really recently discovered asteroids as well. Really no close approach. Talking about 3 million miles or more. Closest one looks to be this 37-foot bus size asteroid, uh, 640,000 miles, which is pretty safe distance. And we got this one a little bit closer, but uh, still, these are very small and at a considerable distance there from Earth. Pretty safe. All right, uh, what else we got here, folks? I think that's about it. Um, have a good day. Friday is tomorrow. Of course, we'll be back a little bit later on this evening with the Thursday night update, unless something major happens out here. Enjoy your day and stay safe. We'll keep an eye on the mentioned regions here. I still think California has got a decent chance of seeing some, some earthquake activity out here with what's going on north and south here of the region. We'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later.